Okay, so on our new studs, we're just gonna drill a couple pilot holes into, into our flange. So we'll get them before we set the mortar. We wanna do that. So before we pull this out, let's just take a look at the levelness of this. Now I knew that I was a little bit higher on this side than this side. So we could raise this up a little bit to make that 100% level. Um, but more what I'm more concerned about is from back to front. And as you can see, I am about a quarter inch off. So I wanna make sure that I recognize that when I go to put my mortar underneath of my pan, then I can adjust that so that my pan is level. So just, it's always good to reference what you're up against and making sure that you have enough mortar. So basically this whole pan on the front end has to lift up a little bit to make this level. But that's what I mean by being a quarter inch out of level. It's not really that big of a deal. You can make it up when you go to set the pan. Okay, so what we're gonna set our shower pan with is just a four to one sand mix. Now you could use any type of mortar the only thing I would uh, refrain from using is actual anything with an aggregate in it, like a concrete mix. You wouldn't want to do that just because it would be harder to level things out. But four to one sand mix is what I usually use for regular mud beds and things, but it's a great setting material, basically just to, to support this pan. So I'm going to make it fairly wet. It's not going to be, it's going to be more like what you would lay brick or something with, uh, because I do want to level this out. But if you were just to simply uh, making it so that it could just be support and that's all and you have a completely level floor Then I would make it pretty loose make it so it's pourable out of the bucket basically So that you don't have any fighting of it holding anything up But in this instance, I'm trying to overcome some unlevelness So I'm not concerned about it being a little too thick. So measure out your water. I'm gonna start out with about four quarts of water for this bag Now you would probably use about three and a half if you were actually doing a shower mix so this is still probably going to be thick. I'm going to be probably adding some more water to it. But one great tool to mix this with is this mud mixer. This allows you to uh, mix things at a drier consistency. Um, you just really can't do that with a thin set mixing paddle. It's really tough to move this stuff around. But that's what this mud mixer is made for. So if you do a lot of this stuff, I highly recommend you grab one of those. Okay, so I'm just going to wipe down the substrate for putting that mortar down. We just want to make sure that we get this everywhere we need it here. So like I said, we're going to be trying to level out this side a bit and so we don't really need a whole lot on this back side So we'll probably got about an inch and a half layer on this front side, kind of going down to nothing. Okay. To prep this, we never did set our drain. So let's just take this out for right now and Put some silicone on this. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do is use some 100% silicone. I'm just using the clear stuff. And put a bead on the actual receiver of the drain and put like a quarter inch bead around the actual OD drain as well. So you can see I have silicone all the way around there and I already siliconed all around that. So I'll just place this into here. You wanna make sure you see that oozing out all the way around. So if you see it kind of oozing out, that's great. And we'll remove the excess after I hand tighten. So all this needs to be is hand tighten. So you first put on your rubber gasket and then your little slip sleeve. And then just hand tighten this. Sometimes that one's about good. And it's gonna take some paper towels and just remove that excess silicone around that drain. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and set this into place. Okay, so temporarily while I'm letting this mortar set up, I'm just gonna put a, a plastic shim under this corner so that this doesn't move. And then I'm gonna just basically stand on this back side. Screw that flange in. Okay. So that's within, that's pretty good. Now we do have a little bit. So make sure that this is level here. It's pretty level. And then we'll just temporarily, because we might be walking on this to do some of the backer board, we'll just put a shim there. So you can see that I do have a bit of mortar holding this front edge up. Yep. Just kind of going. Just make sure. That's pretty good there. But that's probably the most important part, especially on a slider door system. Obviously everything's sloping down. And we'll just 
hold this up with a shim here as well. Okay, so at that point, now we got the shims on there. I can just walk on it, make sure that everything's not moving. We should be in good shape. Okay, so this is the OD no caulk drain. And basically it's just a rubber gasket and a little locking ring that presses into, into place. So when I set the tub, I just allowed this to stick up rough out of the floor. And I find that to be the easiest way to go. So really, so basically you need to cut this pipe down to one inch into the actual fitting. So let's measure down and see where we're at. So we got a two inch hub, so the actual drain stuff itself is two inches and we're flush with it right now so we only have to cut about an inch off of that so what i would do is just measure on my inside pipe cutter and put a little mark about one inch so that's how far we're going to cut that pipe down i find this to be the easiest way to go and then we'll put our locking gasket on it Notice I'm using an impact driver too. This locks this in so it doesn't fall into the drain. Take a utility knife. So you can scrape it with a utility knife. And then actually let me grab that one other tool. You can pause it. So this tool isn't hundred percent necessary, but this is a reamer that will clean the inside of the pipe. So you just rotate it around. And that'll clean and then the outside as well. gasket make sure the bevel is facing up if you have to use a screwdriver to push that down that's fine okay so you can see how the rubber gasket is flush with the top of the pipe. That's what you want it to look like. So that, that's, that's that one inch in there. So you can see this is all flush with the top of the pipe. The pipe's not sticking up past the rubber gasket. Now you can take your locking ring and place that in here. So that's where this little magnet is helpful. That's why I even bought this thing in the first place. So I can get my little tool out of there. Okay, so that's all there is to it. You just basically compress that down with the tool 
and uh, as long as that's pretty well tight, that'll, pre that'll basically press that gasket against the pipe and you'll have a, a no caulk sealed drain. My goodness.